Hi, I'm Pam, and I'm here to talk about video games. So December 9th was the 2021 Game Awards. I streamed this over on my Twitch channel and had a lot of fun doing it, sort of snarking and chatting with people. But if you didn't catch the awards themselves or my stream, or you just decided you wanted to spend almost four hours of your life just doing something else, here is my recap of the highlights and lowlights of the show. The Game Awards is honestly something I look forward to watching every year. I know it can be a bit silly. It's 90% ads for upcoming games as opposed to celebrations of games that have already taken place. And, you know, sometimes there's some cringe factor to it, but I like it. I like seeing announcements for new games and some of the presenters can be fun. And again, it's just kind of fun to make fun of. So there were a few big winners of the night, games that took home multiple awards. The first one was It Takes Two, which took home Game of the Year as well as Best Family Game and Best Multiplayer Game. I haven't played this myself, but I've heard nothing but good things from the people I know who have played it, and I would like to play it in the near future. The other big winner was Forza Horizon Forza Horizon. I always say that. Forza Horizon 5, which also took home three awards, although only one of them they got to go up on stage for. They took home Innovation in Accessibility, Best Sound Design, and Best Racing Game, which, you know, makes sense, and I think it's a great game myself. Also, Deathloop took home two of the big ones, Best Art Direction and Best Overall Direction? I think I haven't played that one either, but I've heard uh, sort of mixed reviews on that one, though generally positive. Now, I was disappointed that Psychonauts 2 didn't end up taking home any awards. It was nominated in a few categories. I thought it was a shoe-in for Best Art Direction. I know a lot of it is based on the first game, but just... The extra graphical fidelity really brings it to life, and each of the brain worlds that you go into are so cohesively designed. I was really wanting to uh, see it win that award in particular. I'm also sad that it not winning any awards it means we didn't get to take a better look at Tim Schafer's purple paisley suit, which I could see him wearing in the audience. I really would have liked a closer look at that. I was also pretty disappointed that Inscription didn't win either of the two categories it was nominated for, which were Best Indie Game and Best Simulation and Strategy Game. And Inscription is just a fantastic game. If you haven't played it, I highly recommend it. It's definitely going to have a spot in my Game of the Year list, and I did feel that it was overlooked, probably because it's a smaller game that came out later in the year, but I wish that it had gotten a little more respect. And of course, the Game Awards are all about the world premieres, and the most exciting one for me was definitely Alan Wake 2. There was just a little teaser to show us what was ha that it was coming. Uh, when I realized it was Alan Wake who was talking during that teaser, I was very excited. I love the first game. It's one of my favorite sort of cinematic action adventure games. I really love the set pieces and the music, the combat, the kind of silly story all around it. I just think that's a fantastic game and I'm looking forward to a sequel. Apparently, they are going to go full survival horror for this one, and I'm excited to see Remedy take on a bit of a different genre. All of their games tend to be third-person, action-adventure, shooter-type games, and yeah, looking forward to seeing what they can do in a bit of a different space, but in that Alan Wake world. My most disappointing lack of announcement was, of course, Silk Song. I was one of those clowns who not expected but hoped for some Silk Song news and when we will be getting the follow up to Hollow Knight, but alas, it did not come, so I wait longer. Overall, I thought the show was well done. I, again, I know it's 80 to 90% ads and it's more about making money than celebrating the games that have already come out, but. I do look forward to seeing announcements for new games that will probably not come out for years, but I can get temporarily excited about them anyway. I also found this show was 
a bit more professional than in years past. There was no outright cringy bits like the Schick Hydro Man from a few years ago. The presenters and the acceptors of the awards weren't really given the time or space to embarrass themselves like they have in the past, and overall the speeches were pretty good. Now there were a couple exceptions to the lack of embarrassing things, and one was a music video? I guess it's for a game called Doke V, I think, and the music video was a thank you to the fans. And it was just an like incredibly this. uncomfortable I don't, I don't video this. of these Please cartoon, stop. chibi children in onesies no. singing and dancing, and I didn't enjoy it at all, but I had to see it, so now I'm showing it to you. Also, there was one award presentation which was a bit odd. They had Simu Liu come out and present the best action game, which I thought was cool, except they had him do this bit where he was just looking at his phone the whole time, saying, hey, Halo came out. I don't know if he was watching someone play Halo on his phone or watching the new Halo show that's supposed to be coming out, but it really didn't land and it just came off as kind of rude and disrespectful to the nominees. On the bright side for the awards that were presented on stage, it looked like all of the nominees were there, so it was really nice to see them get uh, some screen time when those nominations were announced. Uh, Maggie Robertson ended up winning Best Performance for Lady Dimitrescu from Resident Evil Village, and I really like her. She just seems so appreciative of how she's been accepted by the gaming community, and she's always a lot of fun in her speeches. So even though I found Lady Dimitrescu's role was smaller than I expected it to be, I was happy to see her there. I really liked all of the acceptance speeches uh, in general. I also enjoyed that they put the innovation in accessibility category on stage and really gave it its due. I think accessibility is a super important part of gaming and developers, especially, you know, the triple A's that have millions of dollars to work with, but everything down to the indie games should do all they can to incorporate accessibility options to make their games playable to as many people as possible. So I was just really happy to see that get time to shine. However, this brings me to my biggest complaint about the awards, and this is one I tend to have year over year, and that is it's very difficult to take these awards seriously as a celebration of games and the people who make them when so many of the categories are just completely glossed over and given a scant few seconds for the uh, presentation process. Many of the categories, maybe even the majority of the 30 categories, including, and I'm just going to read this, all the esports categories, best RPG, best music, best audio design, best multiplayer, best fighting game, best sim and strategy, games for impact, VR, were given little 10, se maybe 10 second asides. And they don't even say the names of the nominees. They just say the nominees are, and they put them on screen for a couple seconds, and then they say, and the winner is. ...of the Games for Impact Award. Hmm. And the Game Award You're for not even Games gonna say for Impact them? goes to... Man. I loved Boyfriend Dungeon, but I also loved Life Before Your strange, Eyes. Life is Strange, True Colors. The best RPG, the nominees are... How is this not a thing that gets a onstage one? And the Game Award one? goes to... Tales of Arise. A couple of these categories did get their winner to actually give a little acceptance speech. Most was just the winner is this, on to the next one. They would just pump out like five different awards over a span of 20 seconds. And honestly, that kind of sucks. Another thing, Kena Bridge of Spirits won Best Indie, and it was also nominated and won, I think, Best Indie Debut. And in announcing it as an also one, it means that the other nominees didn't even get their names listed on screen. So those were Sable, Valheim, Forgotten City, which was excellent, and Artful Escape. Just wanted to mention those since no one else felt the need to during the awards. I know that the awards doesn't need to be longer than the three and a half hours it already is, and that they have to pace this show out some way, 
But seriously, drop two of the excessively long world premieres for trailers of games we've already know about that are coming out soon, and, you know, actually say the names of the nominees for all the category, and that would go a long way to making this seem like a more serious award show. Other slightly smaller issues that I had with some of the categories... The Player's Choice Award, which is voted entirely by the players as opposed to partially the players and partially the voters from the gaming industry, is that the winner of this category went to Halo Infinite. And from everything I've heard, Halo Infinite is pretty good. Um, I will play it myself at some point. But the problem is that Halo Infinite was officially released the day before the Game Awards took place, and the voting started, like, two weeks before the Game Awards took place. And I know it did have a public beta for the multiplayer, but how can you say this is better than all of these other games when it wasn't even officially out when the voting started? It just, it just seems silly to me. <laughs> and then one last category, the most anticipated game is a, first of all, a very silly category to start with, but it also really highlights the issue with the whole announcement and hype cycle of the Game Awards and any other show. The nominees for Most Anticipated Game this year were God of War Ragnarok, Elden Ring, Horizon Forbidden West, Breath of the Wild 2, and Starfield. The nominees for the 2020 Game Awards were God of War Ragnarok, Elden Ring, Horizon Forbidden West, Breath of the Wild 2, and Resident Evil Village. Which just strikes me as incredibly silly that four of the five are the exact same from year to year. I know that having a, a big hype cycle like Cyberpunk's nine-year hype cycle can really backfire. And it just makes me think about, like, Maybe games should be announced later, maybe some attention should be given to anything else. Just having four of the five same nominees, I don't know, just makes me shake my head. And lastly, I just wanted to talk about some of the standout trailers and announcements for new games. I'm just going to talk about two that I found kind of disappointing, just so I can end on a positive note. Somewhat surprisingly, the Elden Ring trailer didn't do much for me at all, I hadn't previously been excited about this game because I hadn't been a Dark Souls player, but now that I am a Dark Souls 3 fan and really want to play the rest of the series, I thought maybe this was the time to get hyped about Elden Ring. But rather than a gameplay trailer, they did a cinematic story trailer, which really didn't do much to sell the game to me. It's coming out soon, I think at the end of February, so... At this point, we know it's coming, there's already been a public beta, so people know what the gameplay is like. I just found a cinematic trailer a little bit on the disappointing side. Although, the nice thing was that they had the little pot dude from the game come out on stage and present the trailer, and I like him, so I was happy to see at least that part of it. Also, there was a trailer for Dying Light 2, which actually made me less interested in the game than I previously had been. Back a number of years ago when Dying Light 2 was first announced, the dev talked about how the game is going to evolve with your decisions and really go into the sort of RPG elements of making decisions, deciding what factions to go with. And that was what made me interested in the game, whereas I wasn't super interested in the first one. But even though this game is supposed to be coming out soon, again, I think this one is the beginning of February next year, they went with an entirely cinematic trailer. And they seem to be going for the emotional, backed by familiar music kind of story trailer, which tends to be misleading. It reminded me a little bit of that Dead Island backwards trailer a while ago that was so good and so misrepresenting of what the actual game would be like. So the game is just coming out soon. Show some gameplay. Show the people that there is actually a game that will be ready to be played at the beginning of February. I just found this cinematic trailer was a bit of a waste of time. But now on to the good stuff. There was a trailer early on in the show for something called Have a Nice Death, 
This is a 2D action platformer with a cool black and white visual style where you play a little Grim Reaper. And it just looks adorable. The combat looks really fast and fluid. I was really hoping watching this that this would end up being a Metroidvania. Though looking on the Steam page afterwards, it looks like it's actually a roguelike which does make me quite a bit less excited than I would have been, but it's one I will keep an eye on. Also, in a complete surprise to me, Telltale is back. I had no idea that they were making a comeback, and they are doing a game set in the world of The Expanse. And I love The Expanse, the TV show is great, the first book I read in the series is great, it just is really interesting, complicated, political world that I think you could make a really good game out of. I just really hope that Telltale has evolved their formula since they last ceased to exist, because it honestly was getting very stale. So hopefully they've got some new ideas and tricks up their sleeve, because The Expanse is a really fun world to play in. Annapurna's also got a new one coming out called Thirsty Suitors, a game about sort of finding yourself and learning to love yourself. This is about a young woman named Jala who ha, seems to have a very interesting life. She ends up fighting all of her exes in sort of a something that reminds me a bit of Scott Pilgrim. She uh, skates around, does combat, Looks like there's cooking involved in the game. All things I very much enjoy in games, and it just looks super stylish and fun, so I'll definitely check that one out when it comes out. Another complete surprise for me was Star Wars Eclipse, and this started out with a beautiful cinematic trailer. Uh, going through it, I wasn't sure what it was going to be, if it was going to be a new uh, Fallen Order game. I was hoping it might be KOTOR 3, but it wasn't that. I have to say it really didn't tell you much at all about what the game would be like in the trailer. I'm sure these kind of trailers are very, you know, they're difficult to make. They take a lot of skill, but making a good-looking cinematic trailer in the Star Wars universe is probably not as difficult as pulling off a good new game in the Star Wars universe. So again, not much to go on. In fact, the thing that gave me the most to go on was the end when it said, made by Quantic Dream, which was honestly pretty surprising. Quantic Dream made um, Heavy Rain and Detroit Become Human. I kind of have a soft spot for these games, even if I find some of the writings and stories absolutely ridiculous, but I like that sort of cinematic action, choose your own adventure type thing. So very interested to see where this goes and see more information in the future. We also got a release date for the Cuphead expansion called The Delicious Last Course. I think this was announced a while ago and it's something I, com I consistently forget is coming out. However, I loved Cuphead. It was such a great, challenging game, and I will definitely take more boss fights if they're going to give them to me. Also, there was a great little musical segment where they had a uh, really jazzy sort of singers and band playing some music from Cuphead. And the last one is something I'm honestly interested in more because of the aesthetic and the style than anything gameplay related I saw, but it is called Steel Rising. It takes place in a sort of cyberpunky Paris during the late 1700s, and you are a mechanical marvel who I guess is going to help the revolution. So that sounds pretty cool. I looked it up later. The Steam page describes it as a Souls-like, though everything is called a Souls-like now, so who knows, but it looks to be a third-person action game, and again, it was, it was mostly the look of it that really appealed to me. So that's all for my thoughts on some of the highlights and lowlights of the Game Awards. If you want to check out my stream, it will be over on video on uh, twitch.tv slash cannot be tamed for as long as Twitch will keep it up. I think it a few weeks or something and then it'll be gone forever. I'm not going to upload it here because it'll just mean 700 copyright uh, claims and I don't want to deal with that or have other people make money from my videos. So if you watch the awards, let me know what you thought. 
any winners you're particularly excited about or snubs you're mad about, any announcements that you're particularly excited for, uh, let me know. I'm going to leave you with one of my favorite parts of the show, which was a performance by Ashley Barrett and Imagine Dragons doing some of the soundtrack from Bastion. At least I think I'll leave you with that unless it gets copyright claimed. Then you're just going to get a regular end screen. But anyways, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Back when I started the Game Awards in 2014, this band made a bet on me and the show and few believe we could make the Game Awards a reality. Imagine Seven Dragons. years later, Imagine Dragons is back at the Game Awards for a once in a lifetime performance I don't that know celebrates who they are. 10 I... years of super giant games. <gasps> <their> first <gasps> Yay! Bastion. Yes. Please yes, welcome best Imagine soundtrack. Dragons. All right, I don't know who Imagine Dragons is, but Bastion is like the best soundtrack. Super Giants games, yes. Darren Korb and yes. Ashley Barrett. All right. All right, I like this. I love Ashley Barrett so much. I dig my hole, you build a wall. One day that wall is gonna fall. Gonna build that city on a hill. Gonna spill. So be.